Hey, all you cool cats and kittens. This is, uh, I'm Alex Marshall, um, and we're going to be doing the bass trombone lesson on uh, B flat major and G minor scales. Okay, so <clears throat> uh, when we do this, there's a couple things we have to think about. Uh, when we're, we have to think about our equipment, first off. So I have a, an independent bass trombone. So that means that I can play with using my F trigger here or my G flat trigger here alone. <clears throat> so um, that means that I can use one without using the other, right? Um, so with some of you guys, uh, you might have dependent, which a lot of times it'll look like it's stacked up like this. Um, and with that case, you can only use this second trigger if you're pressing down this first trigger. Okay, and that's called a dependent setup. Uh, <clears throat> and then some of you are going to be using uh, just a single F attachment setup. Uh, and that, you know, you don't have to worry about that second valve. Um, but it does make some of the positions a little bit more difficult when you get down low. Um, so I'm going to play. Uh, B flat major scale, two octaves, uh, how I usually play it. <clears throat> dependent or an independent setup like I do this is going to be for you this is how I play with my independent two valve setup so you play your pedal B flat in first that if you're having trouble finding that um, <clears throat> play a B flat in the staff uh, just a little B flat like this and then I want you to just make super weird faces until something very low comes out Okay. Whoa. Right, so uh, making the super weird faces doesn't always help. But really you want to loosen up your jaw, really drop your jaw, sometimes push it forward a tiny bit. Um, <clears throat> and we want to uh, really think of using a lot of air, but very slow air. Okay, so if you're thinking about uh, like water going through a pipe, uh, if we have the same amount of water going through a really small pipe, right, like that, I guess, like that, it's going to be going very quickly, right? And that's how we want to play a high notes. Uh, when we play our low notes, we want a very, very large pipe with still the same amount of water going through it, just very slowly, okay? So my high B-flat air, or my, yeah, this B-flat, <laughs> That's the air for my pedal B-flat. You probably can't hear that, but it was a distinct difference in how, how much air, well, no, in how fast my air is going, okay? Uh, so <clears throat> to get to that low B-flat, that pedal B-flat, really just drop your jaw. Um, you're going to have to make some weird changes to get there, but um, once it pops out, play it a lot because it's very important, especially bass trombone range. So that's your low B flat. Uh, and then when, oh yeah, we're doing, so we're doing independent. Uh, so our C is going to be in fourth position, okay, with both triggers down. All right. All right. Um, and when I play this, I like to play it with no tongue. Uh, because that's going to make sure that our air is constant the entire time. Because a, a tendency is... You see all the movement here? When you tongue, sometimes that could give you a chance to chew, uh, which is like when you're tonguing a note and you go like this, ta, 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 rather than... We don't want that movement, right? Uh, and especially in this, in this low range, we really want to limit that movement um, and just try to 
stop as much movement as possible because we need that efficiency, okay? <clears throat> so pedal be flattened first, C and double trigger four. Then um, you can either go to D in double trigger one, or I actually go to D in F trigger fifth. Okay? And I'll tell you why in a moment. So, notice my slide arm. Da, 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 da. It's just moving right out, right? That I find is much easier to do than going. Da, da, da. We want to really try to make sure that um, in, in this way, uh, we're going to try to just keep our slide moving in, a, in the same direction uh, for as long as we can. Okay, because that's going to make things smoother, right? We'd rather go like this than like this. Da, 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 right? That's the worst. No way. So I play that D in fifth, and then I play my E flat in uh, flat third. <laughs> So D, D, E flat to in flat third. And then um, you can go into F in trigger one if you want, or your F trigger one. I actually use my second trigger in a flat two. Uh, I find that actually staying out here in between these positions, like two and five, uh, sort of gives you more mobility and more options rather than coming into first. Similar reason why I don't play that, that D in first. <clears throat> so I play E flat with my F trigger in flat three, and then I play my F if with my G flat trigger in flat two. Listen. So um, if you can see my slide, it's, well, you can see my slide, this is a video. Uh, it goes, ba, da, right? Just two motions, out, in, for five notes. That's pretty good, right? Uh, and then we're going to go out to G, and then back in, up, up, uh, A, and B flat. to use my tongue here, uh, so you might hear some glisses. Uh, this is really, I, I really encourage you to do it as well. Um, it's a great way to uh, really make sure that you're, um, you're making that air constant, okay? So if you're going like this, if you hear that pulsing, that's what we don't want. That's when you're articulating with your air. Okay, we want to be articulating with our tongue if we're doing that, but otherwise we want our air to be steady the entire time. Okay. And another thing that that's good for not using your tongue is um, uh, making sure that you are having a quick slide. Okay, because if you don't have it, if you're not using your tongue, uh, then your slide needs to be quick to stop the glisses. Right. So. I really encourage working with no tongue. <clears throat> so that's the first octave, right? There we go. Now, the toughest part about getting the, the top octave is making sure that we didn't change our lips too much for the bottom octave, okay? So I know if you're, if you're a little bit new to getting some of these lower notes, uh, it can be kind of a very drastic change um, to your embouchure to, to sort of get those and really pull down to those. Um, <clears throat> And after I go up over this top octave, um, I'm going to uh, actually give you a few exercises on how to, how to limit that, that movement. We want that efficiency like we talked about before, right? Um, so the top octave, uh, I actually, if, you, if you're using a, uh, an in, if you're using a dependent setup, you're going to have to use this F valve for C in first. But I... You know, I like to get the flow, right? I play that C in a flat two with my second trigger. And D in 
in fourth, E flat in third, F in first, G in fourth, A in second, B flat in first. There we go. Um, and then if you're playing the two octave scale, always breathe at the top because it might feel nice playing at the top now, but we have a lot of air that we need to expel, especially to get lower, okay? <clears throat> So that's uh, two octaves, how I would play it on my independent bass trombone. Okay, so if you are if you have a dependent, uh, the only difference is you can't use this second trigger in independently. Okay, <clears throat> you have to use it when using your uh, F trigger, right? So the only notes that that changes are the F in the flat two and the C in the flat two. Okay, so those playing F and C in first, not that big of a deal. I've just come to prefer that flat two just uh, because I can, <laughs> you know, uh, it just is, makes some things a little bit easier. Um, and if you just have a single trigger setup, uh, that C, that low C, is going to have to be in seven. I actually, when I teach it, I call it a flat seven uh, because you really have to be about to fall off. Okay, so um, you'll see at the end of the slide here. See that, that little change in color right where my thumb is right here? That is, um, that's where the stockings are, okay? And that means it gets a tiny bit wider, uh, and that's actually where your slide hits, okay? So you're gonna wanna be past those so your slide is about to fall off. And that's gonna be in tune, okay? So. <laughs> tall man and I have to reach for this okay right uh, so when you're getting into faster passages and stuff you really need to move okay that's a very common thing I find with uh, some of my students who are just starting bass trombone is that they uh, they don't go far enough right um, and so let's First, so I have two exercises that I want to cover. Um, first, we'll talk about the embouchure, uh, like, like I mentioned earlier. First, we're going to talk about how to make sure that we're not changing our embouchure too much as we descend. Okay, so <clears throat> we're going to play an F in the staff. This should be just the most standard, most comfortable embouchure that you have. Right, very easy. Feels very natural. Now you're gonna uh, slur down to that low B flat. So to slur down there, just really slowly loosen your lips. Try to imagine it glistening. We don't want any jerky motions. Da kong. No, 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 that. Ready? Watch my lips and see how much I move. So, we want to always work on that efficiency. Now, when we get down to the B flat, and in, it's still in a very nice, comfortable embouchure, we're going to start to glist down. Okay? B flat to A, how much did I have to move? Not really much, right? And that's the theme that we're going to be trying to go for, is not really moving that much. Okay? We're going to push our slide down and we're going to move our slide slowly and we're just going to feed the horn what it wants air wise and we're not going to force anything with our lips or our tongues or throats or anything we're just going to just give a lot of air and just go for it okay so let's go down to A flat <laughs> simple, right? Um, <clears throat> now when we get start to get a little bit lower here, this is when uh, students tend to go too low. They move, they move their jaw too much, right? So let's try to uh, limit that and we're going to just go down to a G. Ready? Alright, uh, now let's go down to a 
G flat. This is something uh, can be kind of hard to hear this interval, so um, listen to me play it, and then you can play it along with me. That's the interval. Let's play it together. something I really encourage is singing everything. Um, I don't be self-conscious about singing. We're using it as a tool, right? We're not singers. Uh, I actually, every Christmas and Easter, I get paid not to sing. Um, so don't worry about singing and it feeling weird. We're using it as a tool, okay? So that B flat, G flat, da, we need to use that because as people grow, as things change, if you're working out, your muscles may change, I don't know. The biggest thing with trombone is we don't have any buttons we can press, right? We don't have any keys that we press, and it just plays the note, okay? So we really have to be focusing on our ears. So let's go down to an F now. Try it with me. So the sound, the sound should not change quality. Okay, so something really common I hear is Did you hear the sound change? It got a lot thinner and it didn't resonate with this room as much, right? So when we're doing this, we want to really focus on that resonance and making sure that no matter what we play, it has a nice, beautiful, full sound. Okay, so try it again with me, and let's make sure that we get that low F to resonate, okay? There we go. Now, watch my embouchure as I do this. How much changed? Little to none, right? Um, and that's because I do this exercise every day to warm up. Um, and I really focus on doing as little movement as I possibly can while keeping that same resonant sound. Okay? Uh, so if you're doing this exercise, uh, do the same thing that I did. Start on that middle F and make sure that it's just very comfortable and you're playing with that very comfortable embouchure. Go down to the B flat and then gliss down in increments like I did. And just make sure you're keeping that nice resonant sound, nice open sound, and uh, you're not really moving too much, okay? Uh, movement is usually just gonna not make things easier, okay? So let's keep going, let's keep doing that. Let's go, let's start on an F below the staff. So we're actually gonna start on F in the staff. Comfortable embouchure, slur down with B flat. There we go. Do it again, and then just hit your trigger so you slur down to that low F. There we go. And you want to make sure you're using enough air to fill up this entire section when you press the valve, right? Because I didn't that time. Ready? There we go. Now, watch my armature again. Tell me how much I move when I go down to that low F. Not that much. Maybe my cheeks moved a tiny bit, but uh, again, when we're moving, I mean, it's only a B flat to an F, right? So we don't really need to move that much. Um, I know as we get down here, it can be some extended range. Uh, I'm working on some range for some of you, so just really try to relax um, and don't try to force these notes, right? Uh, I'd rather have, you know, uh, a quality sounding F, low F, in uh, like right below the staff. Uh, than a not great sounding E flat below the staff, right? Because uh, if you can play not great, cool. <laughs> no one wants to hear that, <laughs> right? So we want to always play with a really nice, nice sound. Okay, so let's start on that F now. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to gliss. Keep going with me. 
be? So that's the exercise. Uh, it's a very simple exercise, but uh, really keeping that ease is really important. Okay, and that's really going to make sure that uh, everything is working and sounding nice. Okay, um, and then the second second thing that I like to work on is uh, something I use to tune my lower trigger notes. Okay, so uh, when you're getting down there and you're getting into like low D in fifth position. It's just feels like some random position, right? Uh, D flat, slow C, you know, E flat, it, they can all feel just kind of odd. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. So a way I like to tune them is um, think of we're going to play it in the octave, in the, the upper octave, and then we're going to add our trigger and play the same note. And then we're going to find out where that is, and that'll tell us where it's going to sit down it. Okay, so we'll start with um, uh, we'll start with an F, all right? So that's just F. Okay, now we're gonna play F with our trigger, our F trigger. So F without a trigger, F with a trigger. They sounded the same to me. So when we play a low F, we don't have to move. Boom! Perfect. Easy. It's not going to always be that way. Let's try an E. Press the trigger. Wow, very sharp, right? So we got to move. No trigger. Trigger. So I moved about that much. And that much made a pretty big difference in the sound, right? So let's tune it in the upper octave for, again. Trigger. Now play it down the octave. And it should just sit very nicely and be really resonant. Okay? Tuning is a really big problem um, in the lower register too because these are kind of far in position sometimes. So if you're, I mean, imagine if you're playing in the staff, if you have a D, and you're trying to play it in third position. The trombone doesn't like that, right? So that's why the tuning is really important, because if we don't have it in the right position, it's not going to come out, right? So let's try it. Let's keep going, and let's try it with E-flat now. You can play it, hum it, anything you can do to just get it in your ear. Then the same thing, let's add our trigger. So without the trigger, with the trigger, so I moved out a little bit more than I did for E. Okay, so now let's try to play it in, uh, in the upper octave and then drop it with the trigger. There we go. D, it's going to be even farther. There we go. So uh, for me today, it's actually kind of a sharp five. Every day is different, <laughs> you know, so uh, it's important to sort of know these tendencies so you can kind of predict them. Okay, D flat. D flat. Mm. Now let's try to play with the trigger. You have to go out. Regular. Work the trigger. So that's a whole position. So I have to go fifth to sixth with the trigger. C, same thing, sixth position with the trigger. 
So even that, I'm in flat seven, and I'm still too sharp. So I need to go even farther. <laughs> resonance sound. Okay, so that's how I tune those trigger notes. It works really well. Uh, if you do that, you know, once a day or every so often, um, you're really going to be able to start to feel where those trigger notes sit uh, on your face and on your horn. Okay, uh, so now we're going to move on to G minor. Okay, uh, so G minor, G natural minor, has the same exact key signature as B flat major. Okay, so uh, let me play it for you. There you go, G natural minor. Okay, uh, so we we know we find the natural minor by going to the sixth scale degree of the major. Okay, so B flat major, B flat. B flat, C, D, E flat, F, G. That's our sixth note, so that's going to be our minor. If we're in E flat, we'll think of E flat, F, G, A flat, B flat, C. The natural minor, the relative minor of E flat is C. The relative minor of B flat is G. Uh, we'll just do one more. Uh, B. Oh, great. B, C sharp, D sharp, E, F sharp, G sharp, right? So the relative minor of B major is G sharp minor. Right now we're doing G minor, but that's just how to figure it out, okay? So G minor, same notes as B flat major, we're just gonna start on G. So we have G, pedal G in, uh, in fourth. So, and when we get to these lower pedals, same exact thing, play the pedal B flat in first. <laughs> Exercise, especially down in the pedals. Yeah, works every position. I love it. Do it. Um, so starting that pedal G. <laughs> Biggest thing here, we don't want to freak out with our mouth. Okay? People could say, oh, pedal G, and you're like, oh yeah, I gotta play this pedal G. And it sounds like a whale or something. We don't want that. We want to sound like a bass trumpet, right? <laughs> G, A, B flat, okay? <coughs> Excuse me. So, and then once we get to the B flat, it's the same thing going up except we end on G. Okay, so G in fourth, A in second, B flat in first, C in double trigger four, D in F trigger five, E flat in F trigger flat three, F in flat two with our G flat trigger, and then G in fourth. Okay? Right? And I really encourage using this with no tongue as well. Uh, one of the hardest things here is going from that low B flat to the C. Okay? Uh, so when we're doing that, we want to, we're going to have to use different air. Okay, so that pedal B flat to the double trigger C. We have to change our air. Okay, the pedal B flat is naturally a super open and resonant note, right? Uh, just because it's in first position with none of this extra gobbledygook back there, right? So when we go to the C, we have to imagine resonance and imagine darkness. Okay, and what do we have to do physically? We have to make sure the back of our mouth is wide open. Okay, so the pedal be flat. You can go, oh, but that C, it's gotta be, oh, oh, okay. We do that by dropping the back of our tongue. Oh, and we wanna make sure this is all in a nice line. If you're playing, you know, slouch like this, but that's not a nice line. Not a nice line, just a nice, very easy line, okay? So think about that darkness, think about opening everything up. And 
just go through that a little bit because that's that's a very tricky thing. And if you can uh, make that easier, or not, I mean, yeah, if you can master it, then great, do that. <laughs> that is something to spend time on because that is very difficult to do. Uh, and then let's keep going up. So let's go um, at the top octave, starting in low G. Right, so same exact thing. I just played my C in flat two, and then just up to G. Okay, G A B flat C D E flat F G. There's a bunch of different variations, okay? So, um, well, I think that might be a different lesson. Right now, we're just doing natural minor. Um, so, let's recap what I went over. We did our B flat major two octave scale, right? Uh, I have my independent bass trombone here, with that means it has two valves, and they can work without each other, okay? So, I can work them independently or individually, right? Um, dependent, a lot of times they'll be stacked, and that means that you can only use this second valve if you're using this first valve, right? Uh, and then F triggers, you just have this valve, okay? So that means you have to play your C's in flat seven, right? Um, let's go over the tuning a little bit. I talked about uh, how when you're tuning, play it in an upper octave first, so like a C in the staff, and then play the same C in the staff but with your trigger and that's going to help you figure out where it's going to set down the octave and where it's going to fit okay uh, I really recommend that one I do that frequently <laughs> um, and then the, the, another exercise that I talked about is that the slow glisses down minimal movement we don't want to be forcing it shut and to force it to not work but we do want to make sure that it's um, very natural and we're not doing more than we need to okay so if it's you know if I'm going from something very high like I'm gonna have some movement right that's that's a pretty big jump but if we're just going you know B flat to F or something not too much movement has to occur okay um, and then uh, we talked about our G minor scale and talked about getting down to that low G, that pedal G, uh, and just making sure that we drop everything, but we don't have to make well noises. We don't have to, uh, right, just drop, open up everything. And then we talked about going from that B flat to C. Uh, we have to think dark, right? And we have to make sure everything is open, uh, drop in the back of our tongue, and we're all lined up physically, okay? So our posture is a really big part of bass trombone playing, especially when we get to breathing which I think I'll touch on in the next lesson, all right? Uh, so thanks for coming. My name's Alex Marshall. Um, it was really nice hanging out with you all, all right? Be well.